Just that, just that. I'm so excited to be here this morning. I believe that God is here. And your lives will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Be greeted once more to those who are watching us through social media, through different forms of media. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I hope you have prepared your Holy Communion. Please prepare Holy Communion today. We are taking Holy Communion. You know, I believe so much in the power of the, in the, of the blood of Jesus Christ. Today's word is our covenant of righteousness. Hallelujah. Because many of us, you know, I have to repent. After I studied about righteousness, I realized that I was shortchanging God big time by my limited belief. I placed so much emphasis on my works than what Jesus Christ has already done on the cross. Hallelujah. So I want you to pay attention, take notes. So that you can go back and refer to this word. And, uh, and this word is also found on our YouTube channel. City Tabernacle Global Network. Go there. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you can get all the messages on time. Yes. Uh, Father, we thank you once more this morning. Lord, I love you so much. Father God, we love you. I love you so much. I love you, Father, for you loved me first. Before I can even know what unconditional love is. Lord God Almighty, you gave that love for me. Father, this morning, just say, we appreciate you. And we know that, mighty God, you are the God who speaks. Even this morning, you are still going to speak to us. Father, our ears are attentive to hear from you. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord, synchronize me with the heavens. Release mighty God, the now word. That is fit for us, the hearers of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I can't hear your amen. Your amen is my wheelchair. Hallelujah. That is that amen irute Amen. I want you to today I want you to delete everything that you have ever known about yourself. Delete it. This word will need you will need your mind to be on a clean slate. Delete everything that you have ever concluded about yourself. Hallelujah. You see, one of the biggest challenges of us who are born again, blood-saved Christians, we don't know how to look at ourselves the way God sees us. Some of us are still having the same conviction about ourselves before we were born again. And this has put limits on what God wants to do in our lives. You see, if you can know how God sees you, most of the things, if not all, that you think about yourself, you'll never again put yourself in that scale again. God sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Write, write, write that one down. Not through your works. God sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, if we go to Leviticus 17 verse 11, 
It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. So if God sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ, he sees your life as the life of Jesus Christ. Note that one down. He sees your life as the life of Jesus Christ. He doesn't know Miss Marigana. He doesn't know Miss Michelle. When he looks at you, he sees Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is no time he saw to God. There is no Miss Butelezi. When God looks at you, he's looking at who? Jesus Christ. So, the sooner, the sooner you separate your Christianity with your names and put the name of Jesus where your name is, the better. Because that's where you'll start seeing your breakthroughs. Hallelujah. I know, I must confess and admit that we as pastors, we have preached the gospel of condemnation more than the gospel of righteousness. Where a person come to church and leave the place feeling so bad that they don't deserve to be in the church, they rather be somewhere else. And I've repented to God about that. Because we can never satisfy God based on our works. It is not possible. If it's like that, then Jesus Christ was not supposed to die on the cross. Am I condoning sin? No. I'm saying the more you see yourself like Jesus is the more you become like him. R write that one down. The more you see yourself like Jesus Christ is the more you become like him. 1 John 4, 17. Can you go, can, can you go that scripture? Hallelujah. How many of you love the word? How many of you were here on Thursday? The ministry of the word and prayer. If you are not here, if you haven't watched that message, I will, I will, I will encourage you to go to your, our YouTube channel or our Facebook. Go watch that message. First John 4, 17. Eh? Ch check this. I, uh, I just want you to see this quickly. You'll so, love has perfected us among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I love this. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Who is he? Jesus Christ. As he is, so are you in this world. I need you to, I need you to, 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 to repeat this to yourself. Say, as Jesus Christ is, so am I in this world. How is Jesus Christ? He is accepted in the beloved. When he was baptized by John, as he came out of the water, God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. So you can say, this is precious. In whom God is well pleased. You, you can put your name. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Do, do, do you understand the, the richness of this statement? No, not, not as your works are. Not as what you did or you did not do. But as Christ is, so are you. In this world. So we can come to the area of healing. Is Jesus Christ sick? No. As Jesus Christ is. So am I in this world. If Jesus Christ is not sick. Seated at the right hand of the father. So am I in this world. I'm not sick. Hallelujah. Is Jesus Christ broke? No. No. As Jesus Christ is, so am I in this world. 
Is Jesus Christ condemned? No. Where is he? He's seated at the right hand side of the Father. The place of authority. The place of acceptance. So every time when you say, as he is, so am I, you begin to look at yourself differently. Hallelujah. Can you go to Romans 4? I just want us, I want us to look at something. Today, I want your faith to be revolutionized. The, your faith will be revolutionized. There will be a new revolution in your faith. Meaning, you are going to have faith, but with the right believing. You know that you can have faith with wrong believing. So you're going to have faith with what? With the right believing. Hallelujah. Romans 4, verse 1 up to 4. He said, what, what then shall we say? That Abraham, our father, was found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boost about, but not before God. Can you read that again? If Abraham was justified by what? By, by works. He has what? Something to do what? To boast about. For, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. And it was counted for him. For what? Righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the ability to stand before God as if you have never sinned. Are we together? So, your faith first, your faith to move mountains should never be based on what you did. Am I discounting prayer? No. Am I, am, am I discounting giving, coming to church? No. Those things when you understand your righteousness in Christ, they will cease to be a burden. Why? Because you have now become like Christ. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So, your faith, your faith should be based on what Jesus Christ has done. The Bible said Abraham believed God and it was counted for him righteousness. What was Abraham believing in God? God entered into a covenant with Abraham. An animal was cut into two pieces and God walked among, uh, between the two pieces as a form of what? Of sealing the covenant. Abraham did not walk. Normally when, when people enter into a covenant, two people walk between... The, anim, the, the two pieces of animals, the two halves of animals. So God alone walked into the what? Between the two pieces of animals. When God alone walked, he said to Abraham, I'm entering into this covenant with you, swearing by myself, by my works, I as God. So we are the new generation Christian. We have a new covenant of the finished works of Calvary, the blood of Jesus that was shed for us on the cross. When you put your faith in what Jesus has done, you, you receive the right standing with, with God. So you come boldly before God as if you have never sinned before in your life. Am I talking to someone? You come boldly before God as if what? You have never sinned. So God went what is causing a lot of problems within the church is self-condemnation. We know too much of ourselves than what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Can I repeat that? We know too much of our own history than what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So that's the reason why, you know, you are the most powerful being ever existed. I, 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 I want to expose you to you. You know, Genesis 1.27 says, God said, let us make men what? According to what? Image and what? And likeness. And I'm, I'm going to put it to you again. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God said what? 
I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts to prosper you and not what? Not to harm you and give you what? An expected end. Listen to this. God created you according to his image. So you are like God. And God says, he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. Thoughts to give you hope and expected end. Meaning, God is saying, even your thoughts can prosper you or harm you. Because you are like God. So, if your thoughts are always self-condemnation, your, your thoughts are always based on what you didn't do right. Can I, can I tell you something? They are, you are using the anointing upon your life in reverse or negatively. You are busy formulating a formula in the spiritual realm. Instead of you moving forward, you move back, backward. Why? I'm a sinner. I'm a bad person. I'm this person. I don't deserve this. Nobody in my family. So your thoughts, instead of your thoughts prospering you in the right standing with God, your thoughts are causing harm. Now science has, science has found that your DNA is very much intelligent. Your DNA has the ability to hear your voice, the, the voice of your thoughts. That whatever you say to yourself, your DNA will give you that. If you think sickness, you'll be sick. If you think poverty, you'll be poor. If you think condemn condemnation, you'll be the hated one. Look, everywhere you go, you just you just experience what rejection. Why? Because you 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 have never accepted yourself the way God has accepted you. Am I talking to you this morning? So, the righteous, the covenant of righteousness means that what Jesus Christ did on the cross was done for you. When God looks at you, he sees the finished works of Calvary. He sees the perfected son. He sees the perfected daughter. When God looks at you, he sees you on the cross in Christ Jesus. You are not what you think you are. You are not the bad person that you, that you think you are or that, that people made you to, to, to believe. No. I want to put it to you today. You have the right to enter into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. You have the right to enter the Holy of Holies. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have the right standing with him. Righteousness. Not through your works. Many of us here, some of us feel condemned before a person can say anything. You look at the body language of a person, you see yourself, that person condemning you. Why? Because you have wired, you have programmed condemnation in your spirit, man. So, I want you today to delete that devilic, satanic program of condemnation and install a new software of righteousness that, such that even when people do not accept you, wherever you go, you stand and say, I know that I'm accepted in the beloved in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. A lot of things you'll be able to do. You know, I'm going to talk about me. You know, I wanted to run. I've been postponing to start running for a long time. Do you know what was my excuse? Ah, I, I was supposed to have started on Monday, so I, I can't run on Tuesday. So I'll see it next week, Monday. Next week, Monday comes, something happened on Monday, and past I was supposed then. And that's exactly what we do in God. You know what? I was supposed to be perfect today. I can't be perfect tomorrow. I might as well continue sinning. Why? Because I'm this rejected person. So we, we, postpone, we postpone what God wants to do in our lives. Why? Based on what we were supposed to. Am I talking to someone this morning? Hallelujah. Say, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. 
Say like you say, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Can you go to the scriptures again? Can you go to Hebrews 10? Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10 verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 10 verse 1 and 2. I want, I want you to see something here. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of things, can never with these same sacrifices which they have offered continually year by year make those who approach perfect. Verse 2. For then will they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified will have no more consciousness of sins. We have been purified by the blood of Jesus Christ and yet we live with the consciousness of sin. What is the consciousness of sin? Many of you don't believe that things can be right for you tomorrow. No. It is not possible. Why? The consciousness of sin which works with the law of the spirit with the law of, the, of sin and death makes you believe that you have to do something for something to change. Whereas the consciousness of righteousness will say, Jesus has done it for me already. Hallelujah. I might just wake up and walk on what he has done. If I'm looking for a new job, I go there boldly. Say, Jesus has done it already. As I enter that place, I'm entering that place as a possessor, not as a beggar. So, the consciousness of sin gives us false humility. If I can ask you, are you righteous? Are you righteous? Ah, you know, I come how, you know, hey, maybe I'm righteous. You can never be righteous, you know, hey. And by the time you finish the sentence, Satan has already played the whole DVD of, the, of your past sins. And you feel what? Condemned. Are you righteous? I am mm, mm, mm. ah, righteous. Yeah, so we, we find all these reasons to condemn ourselves. But if somebody can ask me, after what I know, are you righteous? I said, yes. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But, but you know, remember last year, you, you did what? You, you cast? No, 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 no. You are the one who can't remember them. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed my past, present, and future sins. Hence, when God looks at me, he doesn't look at me through my sinful history. He looks at me through what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. Am I talking to someone? Say it again. I'm the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. So we can't be always sin conscious. Always. You know, you know that's the reason, you know, that's the reason. Ah, Billy, you'll forgive me, but I must expose you to yourselves. The reason why some of you are always condemning others is because you have condemned yourselves first. You have failed to accept yourself as you are. So you are now on the mission to find mistakes in others in the church. You will say, Once you know that you are the righteousness of God, in Christ Jesus and receive the word as it is. You won't have the ability to condemn your fellow brethren. Why? Because you'll understand that they too are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What do you do? Their weaknesses become your prayer point. Am I talking to someone? Your amen is paralyzed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are getting there. Hallelujah. Let us go to Galatians 3. I hope you are taking notes. Someone said to me, Pastor, I don't need to take notes. I'll just go back to Facebook. Yeah. But you must take notes. Because you'll forget to have data. 
I, I rebuke that spirit of datalessness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that you shall have data. <laughs> you shall have data to stream and to watch them. You cannot have data to gossip when it comes to the word of God. Dololo. No. It's wrong. Hallelujah. Galatians 3 verse 1. What does he say? O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus was clearly portrayed among you as what? Crucified. This is only one I want, this, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Three. Are you foolish? Having begun in the spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered many things in vain? Indeed, if that is vain, therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Check here. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted for him righteousness, therefore, know that only those who have faith are the sons of Abraham. What you need to do, child of God, don't have faith in your works. Hallelujah. So I have to testify and say, you know, I've prayed so much. You know, after praying for 17 days and 22 hours and 36 seconds, God came through for me. Eh? Who gave you the ability to pray? Can I tell you why you prayed so much? Because you had the right standing with God through the finished works of Calvary. You were able to approach the throne room of grace because of what Jesus Christ did. So your prayer, you prayed so much because of the righteousness of Christ, not because of your works. So when you pray, after you have prayed, say, Father, I have prayed through my faith in Christ. And the finished works of Calvary. That is where your faith should be rooted. You know, I, you know, I can never, I can never compete with uh, with Pastor T. You know, when that woman prays, she prays from four to four. No, 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 no. Walk in your grace. Hallelujah. Walk in your what? Maybe she prays from four to four. You read the Bible from four to four. Hallelujah. So, walk, as you walk in your grace, you stop comparing yourself with others. Hallelujah. We all compare ourselves with man Mary, the man Christ Jesus. How, how do we compare ourselves? By standing in what he has done already. By walking in the righteousness of the cross. I don't compare myself with any other pastor. I don't compare because I was not born to be somebody else. I was born to be me in Christ Jesus. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So we must not be, that's why Paul was angry at Galatians. All of a sudden they are boosting in their works. All of a sudden they are boosting in their works. In the flesh. We can boost against, ah, you know what? We, we have one of the most beautiful churches in Albert. And we can boost. But no. We, we, live spirit, we live in the spirit. Why? Colossians 1.6 said, we have been what? Transferred from the kingdom of what? Of darkness to the kingdom of what? Of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Am I talking to you this morning? Hallelujah. Say it again. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Let me address something. How many of you know a, a price tag? Eh? When you go to the shop looking at a garment or a cloth, what do you, what do you look for? You look for a tag, ne? And what are you going to get in that tag? The price. That shows you the value 
of the garment or, the, or whatever that you are buying. Am I right? There are Christians who are walking around with a sin tag. Born again, they've got a sin tag that only they themselves know. They open the jacket. Look at the, can, can you see my tag inside? And read all the list of the sins that they've ever committed. If they are secret sins, they walk around with them. And when they see people, they put them back. It's my list of sins. And now it's time for me to pretend as if I'm holy. And then we pretend as if we're holy, walking around with the sin tag. That has dire consequences spiritually. That disqualifies you to even pray. Because you don't even have confidence to pray. I want you to change your sin tag. Convert it. Look at it. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, okay. But, but and somebody calls your name. Hey, when I'm my man, okay. Let, let me check my tag. No, I'm not that. No, it's not talking to me. It's not talking to me. No, I'm sanctified. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The, no, the, that's not me. That's not me. It's not talking to me. I'm, 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 I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. When now, when now you are a loser, what, what? No, 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 it's not there in my tag. It's not there. But, you know, every time when Satan... Can you go to Revelation quickly? Revelation quickly. We'll just go to Revelation quickly. Revelation 12. I want you, I want you to see something. And we'll go back to, to the sin tag. Revelation 12, verse 11. No, Revelation 12, verse 10. So, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Your sin tag that you walk around, those secret sins that are known by you, that you can't even confess and get rid of them. Do you know why? The accuser of the brethren uses them to accuse you day and night. You can hide them from a fellow brethren, but you, on the back of your mind, you know them. But as you receive the righteousness of Christ, you cut off the sin tag. You start seeing yourself differently. You start knowing yourself through Christ Jesus. You, you got Colossians 12, 1 verse 12, 30 says, giving thanks to, unto God the Father who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Whose son? Jesus Christ. So where are you translated? Into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So you cannot walk into the kingdom of darkness and walk into the kingdom of dear son. Smartiness. It's not possible. Hallelujah. So the sin tag must be cut off by the righteousness of Christ in you. Am I talking to someone? You will have boldness to pray. You will have boldness to give. You will have boldness to serve the Lord. You will have boldness to, to minister the word unto people. You can never have boldness to minister the word unto other people. If it's based on your righteousness. Because your sin tag will accuse you. But today, say, say this morning, I cut off my sin tag. I put on the garment of righteousness in Christ. As I walk, I walk in the authority and power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus Christ, because of his right standing with God, when they said to him, that person is blind, he did not understand that 
anything wrong can be permanent in a human being. He did not under, it didn't make sense to him. Huh? You blind. It is not possible. Why? He had the right standing with God. God was pleased with him such that he knew the mind of God and also applied the power and authority of God through his right standing with God. When he looks at a blind person, he said, "Uh uh-oh, God, what do we do about this? God says, this one can see, do it. Jessica did not say, huh, me. Me, me, the son of Mary and Joseph make a blind person see. I remember my father's sins. No, no, no. You know when it's the moment you say you are son of who? You know, I remember Joseph went and borrowed a knife from someone to cut the wood. He did not retain it back. That, that father, that father is still angry at him. Therefore, that sin, my father's sin is my sin. Um, no, 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 no. He did not walk into that realm. He said, as, my, as I see my father does his work, so I do what? Do the same in the world. Why? Because of his right standing with God. So imagine you, your right standing with God in Christ. Why do you have the same power, the same authority that Jesus had when he was working on earth? Am I talking to you? Some of you are saying, ah, pastor, no, I say, ah, that's the problem. You know too much of you than, than of Jesus. That's the problem. You know too much of you than what? Than Jesus. Know too much of Jesus. Go for the word. And let that word change your mind. Let that word purify you. Let that word cleanse you. You'll begin to know who you really are. Imagine you buy a car that drives 260 kilometers per hour. Every day you are driving 20 kilometers. Why are you doing that? Hey, hey, you know what? I won't have 280, but I'm not sure. Why? Ah, this accelerator. What, what if the accelerator gets broken when I, when I step on it? Okay, okay, what if the brakes? So you have every reason not to work in your power. Because of you. So today I want you to substitute you. Put what Jesus has done for you. Am I talking to someone? You are substituting who? Say me. Say I matter not. What matters is the finished works of Calvary. And then you'll walk in power. Say Jesus Christ. They say he's blind. He cannot see. What? He's blind. He cannot see. And you guys have been living with him like this? Yeah, but what can we do, Jesus? I mean, I mean, maybe his parents have sinned before death. That's what they said with blind patrimony. Maybe his parents have sinned before death, before birth. Jesus Christ said, okay, you receive your sight. Poof. Because what God, what God does in heaven, Jesus has the right standing with God to perform the same miracles. The same power that is upon God is upon him. So Jesus Christ was there when God was saying, let us make men according to our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. So you have surrendered dominion to the, to the sin tag. Am I talking to someone this morning? Say, I refuse to surrender dominion to the sin tag. For Jesus has dealt with the sin problem once and for all. Believe that. Believe that you'll work in authority. Believe that you'll work in power. No, no, no. You, 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 you are not hearing me. I'm, most of you are still shocked. Your systems are still shocked. Because you, you, you have lived so much with yourself. Born again. With Christ seated there, but I'm, I'm fine feeling pity for myself. I'm fine with my sin tag. I mean, even my mother was called the same name. 
madihlapa re le na mo surprise ba mpitsa madihlapa I've inherited this intag even papa ka ne ba mitsa ra dintwa le na the same I no 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 our father who art in heaven that's why Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ when the disciple says teach us how to pray he said when you pray it will be like you will be like this what our father who art in heaven what was Jesus Christ dealing with your historical background the lost prayer the first statement is dealing with what your historical background your father matters not anymore we have what our father what who art in heaven so don't say i'm from this i've done this no sinteg hallelujah the word says the blood of jesus christ he has purged our sins how do you manage to hold on to the sin tag if the blood of jesus christ has purged them where do you get them why are we living from the grave because those sins jesus christ was has died for them buried with them and when he resurrected he resurrected with a glorified body a sinless body meaning that even our sins are buried permanently you are now the righteousness of god in christ you believe in resurrection let me tell you something about resurrection god said whoever eat this tree shall what the fruit of this tree shall what shall surely what die and the penalty of death has been paid that was of sin when jesus christ died he died for me and you okay can i edit with me and you you died also yes no, okay, okay good. you died also even before you were born you died also the moment you received the lord jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you partook and on, on his death you died also when he rose again he rose again to the glorified body meaning you are also glorified in him the sin tag is not your portion you have the right to prosper you have the right to live a healthy and a wealthy life. You have the right to have breakthroughs. You have the right to have answered prayers. You have the right to lay the hands on the sick and they recover. You have the right to raise the dead. Why? Because Christ Jesus has done it all for you. He has conferred all those powers to you through his right standing with God which belongs to you. Can I Can you go to John 17 23? I want you to see something. John John 17 23 something interesting there. What is the time? Okay. John 14 20. It said in the okay, can you just give it context? 20, let's let's start from 22. It said, "And the glory which you gave me, I've given them." <laughs> listen to this jesus christ is praying he's praying to god he's saying and the glory that you have given me i've given who say say i say i'm the partaker of the glory that was given to to jesus by god say through my right standing with god in christ jesus the same glory that was given to jesus christ is mine listen listen to this one 23 in them he say i in them and you in me that they may be perfect in one that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them and have loved them as you have loved me God loves Jesus loves you as he loves Jesus Christ. No 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 you, I, you don't understand this. Re- religion is preventing you to understand this sermon. Eh? I rebuke that spirit in Jesus name. You will receive this word and you will act on it 
you'll run with it. You'll refuse to believe any lie from the devil. Say, God loves me as he loves Jesus. So let us put plainly language English as venda. God loves Jesus Christ the same way he loves me. That's you. That, that's you. Do you hear me? That's you. So the image that you have portrayed about yourself for too long need to die. We need to shed off that garment. That image need to it need to be deleted. You need to start seeing yourself in Christ. Some of you are finding hard to believe. Try it. After we take Holy Communion, the grace of righteousness, the covenant of righteousness will be imputed upon you. You will walk in that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yo, there is so much to teach. Let, let me stop here for today. But let me close by this. John, 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. There is something that I must share with you. James 5.16. Can we go to you quickly? James 5.16. James 5.16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. I'm looking for this. The effective fervent prayer of a what? Of a righteous man. What, what does it do? Avails much. Many people don't know where this word comes from. Those who are conscious of their righteousness in God, their prayers avails much. Okay, can I put this again? Those who are conscious of their righteousness in God, their prayers avails much. In other ways, those who are conscious of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross that gives them the right standing God, they pray differently. They don't pray like those who are, hey, I'm not sure. Hey, God, uh, God, I'm asking for this. However, God, if you don't give it to me, I'll understand because I'm a sinner. You see, God, even though I'm born again, God, but you know that I'm not perfect. Even though I don't get it, God, but you know that I've tried. I've prayed, mighty God. In Jesus' name, mighty God, I believe you that it shall be done. Even though it's not your will, but my will, but even their will, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a prayer of an righteous man. Who does not know his position in Christ? But when you know that it's not about what you have done. It's about what Jesus has done. The Bible said, we come boldly into the throne room of heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. When you're on the throne, you say, Father, I thank you that you love me. You affirm there. Before you can, before you can even go first, before you can even pray, Father, I thank you that you love me. And I thank you that you hear me always. You see, when Jesus Christ, before he can call forth for Lazarus, he, he, he looked unto heaven and said, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. You know, so that is the prayer of a righteous man. The prayer who has the right standing with God. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. And after that, he called forth Lazarus. And death said, uh, somebody's calling Lazarus. And death said, okay, let us hold on to him. And Satan said, uh, death, uh, even if you can try, you won't win. The one who's calling Lazarus back now has got power over life and death. In fact, death, let me tell you something. 
You were in the Garden of Eden. He placed you there. He has power over you. You were only activated by sin. And that sin has been dealt with by him. The one who's calling Lazarus. So your power is, 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 is diminished. You are no longer powerful. So when Jesus Christ called Lazarus death, you just have to let go. Because it's just like God speaking. So imagine you are that person right standing with God. You are calling forth those things that be not as though they are. Hallelujah. Can you all rise up? We're about to take Holy Communion now. Even those who are watching me through the Shall me, dear, please prepare your Holy Communion. But I want us to, to pray a little bit. I want us to make some few confessions. I want us to make some few confessions. We'll continue with righteousness. We started with righteousness last week. We'll continue with it. Today we're dealing with the covenant of righteousness. I want you to understand that your righteousness in Christ is a covenant right. You did not die for it. Jesus died for that. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Jesus died for it. So it has nothing to do with your works. The Bible said, 1 John 5, 1, 9 said, if we confess our sins, he is quick and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness. So what do you do? Confess. Repent. Repent. We'll come to, to, to that part. Next week, I want us to talk about your faith and righteousness that those who believe in their right standing with Christ, they've got a different faith. They don't believe like those who are believing their works. They pray about something and forget about it that they prayed about it. And then the answer comes. When the answer comes, they say, oh, by the way, I prayed about it. Thank you, God. Thank you. They don't, they don't pray for something again and again. Jesus Christ said, receive sight. They all receive sight. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He came forth. He said to the lame, the Bible said, Matthew 15, 30, he healed the lame, the mute, the blind, and all the, they were all, the Bible said, the last verse said, and they were all healed. There was no two ways about it. And that very same power, he said, Lord, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you know why? He wants you to partake in his righteousness. Not your works. So the more you partake in his righteousness, is the more you are able to move away from your flesh. Everything that is associated with flesh, you are able to move away from it until you become what? Christ-like. But it starts with you acknowledging that it is not about you. It's about him. Jesus Christ. Am I talking to someone? I want us to pray. I want you to pray that, Father, I'm, I'm letting go of all these things. This condition that I've set for myself of rejection, feeling that I'm not a good Christian enough. What is a good Christian? Can I tell you the definition of a good Christian? The one who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior is a good Christian. Hallelujah. And, and as you grow in Christ, you realize, oh wow. You know what? You know, when, when was it? Yesterday I woke up, I realized that my daughter is eaten already. Normally we prepare them breakfast, but she woke up earlier than everyone and I found that she, she, she was in a room, in a laptop, doing something. Do you know why she did that? She didn't wake up and wake us up. She understands her rights in the house. She woke up, went to the kitchen, prepared food and eat. Some of you are still trying to understand your rights in the kingdom of God. Can I put you your right? Can I give you your rights today? You are righteous. We are righteous in Christ. That is your full rights. And what do you do with all rights? You enter the Holy of Holies. With what? With boldness through what? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is therefore now no what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. 
We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? To the spirit. For the law of sin and death, for, for the law of life in Christ Jesus, has set us free from what? From the law of sin and death. So many of us, even though the law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from law of sin and death, we are still, op- we are still coaching the acts and the statutes of the laws of sin and death. I don't deserve this because. When, I, when are you going to say you deserve this because Jesus did it for you? And you will see, you put your works aside, you will have so much energy to serve. You will have so much zeal to give. You will have so much zeal to, to share the gospel with those who don't know Christ. The moment you put your works, because your works makes you tired. You do so much, the next thing you hear the voice of, of Satan, is that all that you can do? I mean, you, do, you call this giving? Come I mean, really now. You see, that somebody gave under rent and it was not like a 10 rent. You destroy your seed that you, you know that it is your all. That's why, the, that's why Jesus Christ said, the lady who has given the least has given the most. Why? Because she gave her all. He was looking at the position of her heart. Hallelujah. So the moment you live in the righteousness of God, you will serve without hesitation. No, no reason, no reason, nothing, nothing, no excuse can come between you and God. That's why Jesus Christ, because of his right standing with God, he never hesitated to go to the cross. The most brutal thing to ever happen to the person, he trusted his God that he said on the third day I'll, I'll, I'll be up. And that's exactly what happened. May, may, you, may you all lift up your hands. Wherever you are, may you all lift up your hands. I want you to pray. I don't know, I don't know what you are going to say, but get rid of your sin take. Get rid of your self-condemnation. Say, Father, I'm coming to you as I am. As I am, as you are. Bible says, come as you are. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, righteous God, righteous Father, we thank you for loving us so much. Jesus Christ, you are awesome. You, you are great. You loved us so much. You loved us so much that you died on the cross for us so that we can have the right standing with God. The very same thing that Adam and Eve lost in the garden. Jesus Christ, you restored our right standing in the garden of Gethsemane when you say, let, let not your will be done, your, but the will of the Father. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the restoration of our right standing with God. We thank you, mighty God, that Father, we will leave this place uplifted, knowing that we are accepted in the beloved. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you. We get rid of this sin tag. And we accept, mighty God. We will receive, mighty God, the righteousness. The righteousness that will make us and give us the ability to resist sin. We thank you, mighty God. We bless you, daddy. Oh, Lord, you are awesome. We love you. We love you so much. We love you so much. We love you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I just share one, one scripture with you before we take Holy Communion? Can we go to Isaiah? Write, write this one. This scripture is important. Isaiah 32, 16 to 17. Remember, we are not yet done with righteousness. We will continue with righteousness until we understand who we are. Hallelujah. We will continue with righteousness. Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32, 
verse 16 to 17. What does he say? The work of righteousness will be peace. No, I'm starting from 17. Then, then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be fit, peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Hallelujah. You see, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16 to 17. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16 to 17. Says, then judgment will dwell in the wilderness. Why wilderness? Where, where, where we received our justification, judgment is no longer our portion. Jesus Christ was crucified in the wilderness by the, in Golgotha. Justifi we received justification instead of what? Judgment. That's what the prophet Isaiah saw. And they say, and we dwell and righteousness remain what? In the fruitful field. What the fruitful field? Where Jesus was crucified, that's where we receive what? Our fruitfulness. And the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be what? Quietness and assurance forever. You know, the quietness of the spirit. Be still and know that I, I am God. Be still, still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I that is that is that is the that is the quietness and peace. When you are still, knowing that he is Jehovah, Sitkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. He is Jehovah, Sitkenu, the Lord of what? And you become, you become still. He said, Father, I've confessed my sins. I acknowledge that I've, I've sinned, but Jesus has died for them. As I confess them, in your word you said, you cleanse me from all forms of unrighteousness. I'm now the receiving the righteousness in Christ. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you'll be a different Christian. No amount of accusation will put you down. No amount of self-condemnation will put you down. No, no, no. Don't go there. Self-condemnation will put you down. But accusations from Satan won't put you down. You will know your right standing in God. And when you go pray, you know, had ever seen, okay, just, just last one. We've all been children before, ne? Had ever felt that confident when you know that you have, you have done everything that your parents want you to do. When you go to ask for money, you don't hesitate, ne? Ah, uh, you go to them with boldness. Ah, uh, Papa, what a fifty rand. Why, you have washed the car, you have done the garden, you have cleaned the house, you have done everything. We have that confidence. So you approach your father with that confidence. Our father, uh, dad, can I have hundred bucks? And you know that it will come out with a smile, my son. So even now, when you when you approach God, when you approach God, God does not see you. When you come to him, he sees Christ coming to him. He sees the cross coming to him. He sees crucifixion coming to him. And when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, he saw, wow, wow, you reminded me of my righteous son. Because you are in him, I hear you, I answer your prayers. Hallelujah. Are we together? Uh, please, please distribute Holy Communion. Sanitize your hands first again. Go to the sanitizing station. And everybody, after taking Holy Communion, after take, start touching the glass, go sanitize your hands. We've got multiple sanitizing stations here. Amen. We're not going to stop partaking the blood because of that. We will.
we're not gonna stop. Yeah, please bring, please bring. Be still and know that I, I am God. Be still, worship him, come. Be still and know that I, I am God. Be still and know that I, that I be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Oh yes, Lord. Be still and know. Be still and know that I, that I am God. Oh, be be still and know that I am the Lord. I am that He left thee. I am the Lord. I am. your sickness. I am the Lord. I am that he lets thee that he be still and know be still that I that I am be still and know be still that I that I am go be still that I Let me continue reading this scripture before you can go take Holy Communion. He said, The work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure buildings, and in quiet resting places. That's what righteousness does for you. Anxiety get destroyed. Hallelujah. Do we all have our bread in our hands? Can you hold our bread? John 6, 56 says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. When you abide in him, you abide in his righteousness. Hallelujah. That's a, can I repeat this scripture? He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. You abide in Jesus Christ, and he abides in you. Hence, you are the righteousness. You see, you take the blood for righteousness sake. Hallelujah. Are we together? First Corinthians 11, verse 23. To 26. Say, for I receive. So I deliver to you that which I receive from the Lord. That the Lord Jesus Christ on the day he was betrayed took bread. When he has given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body is broken for you. Do this remembrance of me. Let us eat the body of Jesus Christ.
in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as drink remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till you come. Listen to this new covenant. A covenant of what? Of righteousness. Not a covenant of your works. A covenant of the finished works of Calvary. Let us drink. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you, mighty God, for you said as often as we eat this bread and drink your blood, we proclaim your death till you come. Father, even this afternoon, we are proclaiming the finished works of Calvary. We say, Father, this covenant still stands in our life. We therefore, mighty God, proclaim that we are the rightful partakers of the covenant of righteousness in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. If you know what has just happened now, you'll do better than that. If you understand what has just happened now, you will do it better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Give him praise. Give, come on, give him more praise. Give him more praise. He is good. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Lift up your voices and give him praise. Your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the end of today's service. Uh, I'm glad that you, we all partake in the Holy Communion. And just, it's revelation, it's revelation that gives us the right to partake in the covenant of righteousness. Somebody is telling me that I forgot to collect Holy Communion. Not to collect offerings. So you know when we start with the blood, uh, I know when, when you're done with the blood, to me it seals all. Eh? Uh, with, with those who are watching us, uh, through media, the account number will be posted there. Please transfer your gifts, your offering, and your tithe. Hallelujah. Uh, even if you are not coming to church, you still deserve to be blessed. So, activate your blessing. Knowing that you are still the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. God bless you. May we come and give.